Hi, it's Helga from Helga's Pennsylvania Cooking Homestead, and today we're going to be working on an Easter treat. Around here, one of the big things is all the local churches will make um, chocolate-covered peanut butter or coconut uh, Easter eggs and sell them as a fundraiser for the churches. And I actually, the coconut ones are okay. Today I'm going to be making peanut butter ones, though. And I'm going to be doing a couple, couple of different types. And uh, it's a couple step process. You make your filling, you uh, mold it and, and chill it, and uh, then you melt your chocolate and you dip them, and then you have to chill them and have the outside harden up on them. And uh, I'm actually using a uh, church recipe here um, that I have from a while ago, and uh, I'll bring you along and make these treats. I love these things. They're like one of my favorite things ever. So um, let's get to it. These Easter dishes are part of an Easter collaboration uh, with Teresa's Stay at Home Life. I am going to include uh, her channel down below. Uh, her channel is somewhat new and still small, uh, starting out. But if you like my channel, you'll love her channel. She's really awesome. Um, she's been doing a lot of baking over there. She's done a lot of dinner ideas. But uh, I've really been enjoying her bread and, and roll videos too. Uh, Kaiser rolls and the whole deal. <clears throat> so we decided to do an Easter collaboration together. We're each doing three dishes. And uh, so this is part of that. And like I said, um, I'm going to have my own playlist and I'll add hers to it. And vice versa, go check her out. Teresa's Stay at Home Life. You won't regret it. Do is uh, cream our butter and cream cheese and it's a quarter yeah a quarter stick of butter which actually relates to um, a, yeah eight tablespoons quarter pound half cup and then eight ounce block of cream cheese and we're gonna bring that up and start that mixing I have the butter and cream cheese mixed now I'm going to dump in a cup and a half of peanut butter. Um, when I'm baking, whether it's for my cakes or my peanut butter icing or my cookies, um, I've tried all kinds of peanut butters over the years. And the kind you use certainly makes a difference. So, um, you know, you can do whatever you want with whatever kind you want. But for consistency of taste and uh, creaminess and what I like, uh, it's usually Skippy or Jif. The only two brands I'll use. Everything else just doesn't seem to turn out right. So, I'm going to mix this together. Now I'm going to add in a uh, teaspoon and a half of uh, vanilla. And a pinch of salt, which pretty much is about a quarter of a teaspoon. And I'll mix this thoroughly. So, Everything is mixed now except for the 10x sugar, and this is what it, the mixture looks like. Um, <clears throat> 10x sugar is here. I won't probably use all this, but it calls for uh, two pounds going into this. So we'll add it in. We want it into a certain consistency. It's pretty firm, and uh, so I'm going to add enough sugar to do that. So you can see what it looks like as we get going here. That's it. <clears throat> it's firmer, it's crumbly. It's what we want. And the thing of it is if, if you would get this too dry, you can uh, always you can always add a little bit more butter or cream cheese and firm it up. But see you're gonna be able to form form these up pretty easily. So Let's get shaping them, and I'm going to put them on a tray and then put them in the fridge to uh, cool and chill and uh, firm up. Now, there are proper molds for this, but I didn't buy any. Just didn't get around to it, and, well, I found half a plastic egg. Does just fine for giving you the overall shape. So... 
There you can see it. I just took a plastic egg and cut it that way and, and take it off. There we go. Like this. And then it gives you the nice egg shape too. And it should stay uniform in, in size. So, yeah, not the fanciest thing, but you know what? It was cheap, it was free, it was here, and it worked. So you want to take this, you want to roll it good and make sure you have all the air out of it. <clears throat> and then I just take my uh, crazy little egg here, put it in, so it gets the shape. Take off the ex excess. There we go. I'm just going to keep filling this up to do my eggs. This part is melting my chocolate. These are milk, milk chocolate chips uh, for this. And <clears throat> you can do it with just chocolate, but if you need to take your eggs anywhere or whatever, they're not going to hold up as well and can melt more easily if you don't add this. This is actually um, paraffin, or what they call paramount crystals. And before you get upset and think, oh my god, it's wax! It's actually made out of uh, soy and palm kernel oil. So it's completely edible. It's not, it's not like bad wax. Not like, you know. So, and this is going to help make it uh, runnier uh, to be doing the dipping of the eggs. As you can see here. My fancy double boiler set up. Never want to do direct heat with, with chocolate when you're tempering it. And I know you can do it in the, in the microwave. I just choose not to because I just don't trust it. And, and microwaves tend to vary a lot on uh, temperatures and on settings. So i just rather do it this way feels more reliable. It doesn't take long. And that's the other thing. You know, it really doesn't take long to do this. Get it all nice and melted and creamy. And they usually say about one ounce of wax to uh, 12 ounces of chocolate. So this will be close. Other old recipes will tell you to just add enough wax to make it runny. <laughs> you gotta love the old recipes and you know you gotta interpret. Okay, that looks like it's pretty smooth. Got the last couple of lumps. Get my wax melted in. And this is going to make it a lot nicer for dipping. The other thing about it is, you see how it made it more runny? Get that incorporated in good. Um, the other important thing about that is, uh, then later when it, it hardens up and gets cold, and I like freezing these, they do freeze. Get that all mixed in good. It forms a nice hard shell on them, so they travel better, and uh, that's why that's the main reason you know the church ladies do it that way because they're traveling. They wrap them in uh, wax paper and uh, bundle them up and take them all over to sell as fundraisers. Okay, the chocolate's ready. Let's get the eggs. Now, here are my eggs. See they're firm now from uh, having been in the fridge and I'm going to dip these. There we go. There's a covered egg. There 
there's another one. And as soon as I get these done, I'm just going to pop these right back in to chill right away. You got to work quickly too because you only have so long before your chocolate cools down. I know there are people that make these prettier. I don't make these every year. I haven't actually made these in a long time. But uh, they taste good. And as you do more and more of them, they'll get prettier. And if you have leftover chocolate that you don't know what to do with, chocolate covered strawberries. Oh yeah, baby. Milk chocolate in this case. And you know I'm going to have to eat that, right? Yeah. So my Easter eggs are all done, and I forgot to get a shot of when I had them on the tray, so I'm going to insert a picture uh, here right after this of what that looked like. The finished product looks like these, okay? Um, these are the dark chocolate ones with um, a white chocolate one, and the white chocolate one is the sole survivor because Michael ate the rest of them. <laughs> um, so let me show you what these look like um, up close came out really nice. I will tell you that the milk chocolate was decent to milk uh, to work with. Uh, the dark chocolate was really nice to work with and the white chocolate, as we all know, isn't really chocolate. Stunk to work with. It's really difficult to work with. Didn't want to come out pretty at all. Um, most of the people that ate them didn't care, but if you're looking for a prettier product, I gotta try and figure out a way to work better with white chocolate. Um, However, it, it didn't ruin, it didn't change the taste any at all. They, they're really good. So let's look at what this looks like inside. I'm going to cut this open. Now this, these were made, the dark chocolate ones here, were made with a crunchy peanut butter uh, per Mike's request. So here you can see what they look like. This is like having Reese's peanut butter egg only, only better. Oh man. These are so good. Although I have to tell you, after making dozens of them, I am about sick of them, but they're still really good. So that's the chocolate peanut butter Easter eggs. Um, you don't really find them around outside of the area a whole lot, so they're a treat, you know, intrinsic to this area. We look forward to them every year, and I'll be making more next year. I might even try coconut ones next year, but uh, they came out really good. Nailed the filling. Filling is, uh, like I said, a little church lady recipe when they make them around here for the fundraisers. So you can't beat that. So, a little coal region Easter tradition. Chocolate peanut butter eggs. And once again, this was an Easter collaboration with Teresa Stay at Home Life. We each did three Easter videos for this week. I will include her link and playlist down below. So check her out. And uh, these are really good, man. I'm going to be glad they're going to be gone soon. <laughs> check her out and uh, check out my other vids for Easter week. And until uh, next time, bye.